Hello, good morning and welcome to the blog. Thank you so much everyone for some lovely feedback on our first day of the RTI series that we're doing, which is um, respiratory infections we're discussing this week. I was very grateful for quite a bit of positive feedback and just wanted to share a few of the, the messages that we had, Jared, from yesterday. So first of all, Hamlin, he was very happy, thought we should take a proactive approach on having a um, uh, nebulizer or a, 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 what they call them, there's another word for them, a humidifier. Fogger. 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 So we've got one down here, Jad, just to show that quickly. That's part two, homemade by Jad and myself, under the recommendation of the vet, who recommended that we um, uh, have something like that. And part two, we're going to go into the detail of how to um, source um, a um, or make one of these um, humidifiers, they're called, Jad, or foggers. Yeah. Re reptile fogs. Nebulizer. Nebulizer. There's so many names for them. but So we're going to come out on part two. Hamlin also was very impressed with the thought for the day because he was um, commenting on that and he agreed with us that uh, true leadership is a choice. And he said you can, he thinks everyone's born to be a leader. <laughs> but he said well, whether you choose to be a good leader or not is a different matter. <laughs> so I like that. I think that's a really spot on analysis, isn't it? I quite, I quite like the feedback and uh, yeah, thank you so much Hamlin for that. We, we'll, we'll agree with you on that one. Now Gavin gave us some feedback as well. He was very grateful for the video. He said, thank goodness this material's come out because I think there's a shortage out there. And he says, it's great because we can now discuss it openly as a community and it's not a taboo subject. And this is the whole point of doing these things really is to get it out in the open and just have a good old debate. I have learned so much. Remember, I'm on a learning curve here. I've only been doing this 18 months. So I'm a baby in the reptile world. But you know, I'm one of those people that I just love to absorb knowledge and learn. And today we're gonna to talk about some of the further anatomy. I've been studying anatomy, trying to work out and answer some questions on, does a bull python have two lungs? Does it have one lung? What's the purpose of them? So I've been doing a bit of homework. So I think, uh, Rob, you'll be happy to know uh, as one of your top pupils, I've been doing lots of homework, trying to gain more and more knowledge and more information. And um, we'll invite anyone out there to share information, whether, you know, whatever you're experiencing, doesn't matter what level you're at, we appreciate all feedback. Because like I said, an idea can come from any one of us, which could actually be life-changing for our snakes, life-changing for the hobby, life-changing for us. So, thank you for those. Angel um, gave me a beautiful message yesterday, so thank you, Angel. Really appreciate your love and support. And he says, thank you for your heartfelt concerns. And um, he also said he's doing a lot better. He feels the joy of our videos, and it's helping him through his... Um, what would I call it? It's a mul I would, I would describe it as a, a multiple uh, impact when you lose life, one loss of life is bad enough, but to have four in such a short period, I just can't even imagine what that is like. So our heartfelt um, love is coming out to you. And that really inspired me to um, find a quote for the day, which is applicable for all of us. Um, but I'm gonna draw upon, and I should really be coming in with my boxing gloves, shouldn't I, Jared? I should be like, um, yeah, I should have got my boxing gloves out, Jared. Next time I'm gonna get the boxing gloves out. So we're going to bring a new character into the into the uh, reptile house, and it's going to be yes, you guessed it, Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. So let's have a look and see what Rocky has to say. The quote comes from Rocky, and I've got it up on the screen, Jared. So let's have a little look and see what he has to say. It's over there. All right, shall I read it? Yep. Okay. So Sylvester Stallone quotes. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. I don't care how tough you are. It will beat you to your knees. And it will keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to get hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard ye hit it ain't hot it ain't but it ain't about how hard you hit it's about how hard you get hit and you keep moving forward how much you can take and keep moving forward that's how winning is done thank you jared <coughs> oh, <dear me. coughs> beautiful quote I love that quote, Jared. 
What are your thoughts on that, Jared? I used to, so I used to work out a lot, and um, before I'd work out, I'd listen to motivational speak, motivational speeches, mm -hmm. and that was always one of them that came on, and it got me pumped in the morning. So yeah, I like it. So we need to get the other tiger. It's January. We need to bring in a gym series, Jared, and get some get you doing some weights and workouts. We might get Jared. He loves his workouts, although you are nursing an injury at the moment. Uh, Jared loves his weights. We've got what we call in our barn. What do you call it, Jared? You've converted it into a gym, haven't you? Average Jared's gym. <laughs> Average Jared's gym. We might take you in there if you want to have a bit of fun in there. Oh, We've it's got a state in there right now. It's a state because it's full of decking. We're trying to do some decking at the moment. I'd be putting my decking in there. You can just about get to the cross trainer, can't you? We've got a professional cross trainer in there. And I used to run on that and got super fit. I lost three or four stone many, many years ago. And I was the top squash player. And uh, since my hip injury, because all the wear and tear of moving on a squash court, I used to play for three or four hours non-stop, racquetball. And I used to love it. And we used to, Jad and I play. And we haven't played for three or four years. That's why I'm so out of condition, so out of shape. I've got to do something about it. But once I get my operation, I'll be like a, what's the name of that guy, t top tennis player that we love? Andy Murray. Uh, I've got the same problem as Andy Murray. He's bounced back and he's starting to win tournaments. So, well, not win tournaments. He's starting to rank up there, isn't he? So that's very inspiring for me that life hits us with a lot of blows, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, emotional. And we're all going through so many different challenges out there. And uh, you only have to put on the news yesterday, you know, what's going on out there. And it's just horrendous, the pressure that we're all under particularly the NHS, and our love and concern and claps go out to the NHS and all the care workers and all the doctors and all the staff and all the politicians that are trying to get this vaccine rolled up. We're up to over 4 million vaccines in the UK now. So it's starting to step up. I think things are going to start to have to step up because this, uh, this virus is getting out of control. And uh, so it's, it's, it's difficult out there. But before we go any further, um, I think I should just finish up on a couple of other comments and then we're going to go and do some behaviour stuff. So, we also had um, Welsh Balls and Joey, who are both what I call bearded dragons, a bit like you, Jared. Um, they saw the funny side of my joke yesterday. You know, I was talking about um, not having, you know, like I think Rob was saying that the animals that we put together in pair, if they are rubbing around in poo during the mating period, that's quite normal not to worry about it as long as you don't leave it too long. And I was saying, don't use that technique in your love life if you're having any problems. And uh, I think it's because Mandy said to me she wants, she prefers me to be shaved. So it wasn't supposed to be an attack on anyone with a, with a beard. But she, Mandy likes it nice and smooth, whereas I think a lot of women like it rough. That sounds quite awful, doesn't it? Smooth or rough. And I won't get into um, gels and things because uh, pro gels, there's a big debate out there. And by the way, Richard, thank you very much for your mentoring video yesterday. I really enjoyed that and I just want to put my big thumbs up and say how much Rob is such a great mentor and uh, he's a natural and I love the idea that um, you're, I thought, what was they saying, they were saying on the thread, I was reading all the threads on Richard's video and he was saying that so many people out there need a mentor so hopefully this video we can act as surrogate mentors if we can't have that physical relationship but I'm really getting excited because tonight I'm going to give Wayne a call and tomorrow we're going to have our Zoom chat. And uh, I've got a feeling that Wayne's going to become another mentor for me. I just have this feeling. Because he's coming to me rather than me going to him, which is interesting. And I think when you choose a Jedi Knight, I think it has to be in that order, Jared, if I remember. No idea. No? <laughs> Anyone that's a Jedi fan, let me know if it's got to be done that way. Or I think the most important thing is two people connect in some way, whether it's from the master to the apprentice or from the apprentice to the master. It has to be a natural process, which I think was what Richard was saying. It's got to be natural. You can't force love. Love is a very natural thing. So that leads us nicely on to a couple of other comments, which getting a lot of love from Colin and Kaz. They both give us updates with their RA problems. Colin's snake is on the mend. So well done, Colin. You're obviously doing something right there. And his snake is getting better. And he says he loves these videos. <laughs> he really does. I'm so pleased. You're the, you and Kaz inspired us to do these videos. So it's a big thank you to you. And then we've also got James Fitzpatrick. Now he thinks the video was great yesterday. He said it's an unspoken subject, not enough information out there. We need more research. And I totally agree with you, mate. I don't think there's enough out there. And he said, oh yeah, he shared my opinion. We were both shocked. When we had to call upon a vet, Jared, remember we had to call upon a vet. Couldn't find one 
within an hour's drive from where we live. I was shocked by that. I mean, my wife, we've got so many animals, cats, dogs, you name it, it's a real menagerie here. We've got a local vet, and that local vet, who we know so well, doesn't have a reptile division. I thought, oh, a bit unusual. But until I realized we've got to travel one hour there, one hour back with our snake to get him sorted. It's a long journey, isn't it, Jared, for, for that? And also, it puts the snake under extra pressure. So I've got this idea. I'm gonna telephone the RCVS, which is the Royal Something Veterinary Surgeries, I think. So I'm not sure what the C stands for, Jared, but the Royal Something, I think. They regulate the vet profession, and I wanna know why we haven't got more reptile vets. Anyone else got any thoughts or feedback on that one? Let me know, put down a comment, but I'm gonna try and find out, and I'm gonna kick some ass, in a sense, because I think that reptiles are giving a second-class treatment here. You know, you've got all these vets that can do farm animals, and they can do cats and dogs and all the rest of it, but where's the, where's the speciality specialists coming out? Um, reptiles are huge, huge love of this country and the world. Out of interest, let's find out from our other viewers in the US and all the other parts of the country, are you struggling as well? Is this a worldwide phenomenon? Or is this actually just a UK problem? So let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, Edwin, um, he gave me a lovely message yesterday. He's busy catching up and he's teaching his kids from home at the moment. He's got lovely kids and it's a big hello to Reuben and Miriam and uh, all the family. And I hope your dad is using this channel to be part of the education process. <laughs> I'm gonna do some science and anatomy later. So you may wanna show that to the kids, Edwin, and that might give you a little bit of respite. You can have a uh, a break where the kids are watching our program if you like but um it's your choice you're the parent you're the teacher but just a little suggestion if you need a respite and the other thing is Kaz I've got to thank Kaz because Kaz said her big girl Zuri just an update on her the vets recommended some a treatment which I've never heard of before which is basically you run a hot shower in your bath you let the bathroom steam up and then you take your snake in a rub and you leave it in the steamed up hot steam bath you keep an eye on it, you don't just leave it, but you put it in there and apparently that clears the mucus in their lungs, or it helps to clear it. So let us know how you get on there, uh, Kaz, with that one. I'm not sure whether anyone else has tried that, but I know there's other methods out there. People use, there was a video about a guy using, um, what's that stuff that we looked Vicks. at? Vix. I'm not sure whether that works. Some people may say swear by it, but our vet said not to use it, said to use the F10 which we are doing, and later today, Jay's gonna to show you how to do that. Right, without any further ado, let's go and do an update on how everything's done. Yesterday was our feeding day. How was the feeding, Jay? Not bad, not bad. Come on, let's have a look. shed that left. But... Yeah, let's go have a look and see. Let's let our snakes be the teacher. So what would you, what would you say, Jad? Well, I've been preparing this material, Jad, Jad did all the cleaning today, so thank you, Jad. Sorry. I haven't seen anything. What would you like to share with us that you've noticed? since feeding. Um, we've got a big shed and a poo. A big shed and a poo? Yep. On the 12th Calico. day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a clean, which one is it? Calico. Calico Pringle. She gave me, what did she give me? Oh my goodness, look how gorgeous she is. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Humidity baby. So we have got a perfect shed which is wonderful. And we've got a wee and a poo. So there we go. Absolutely bang on, isn't it, Jared? How's she looking? She's lovely. Are you happy with her? Yeah, a very clean shed. Yeah, we haven't cleaned this one yet. Jared has done all the cleaning except for this because he wanted to show you what's going on with her. So I'll clean that, Jared. <laughs> did you done all that? Sounds good. And did you use gloves? Yeah. Well done. So Jared is now using gloves. He's now being extra um, vigilant when it comes to hygiene, so thank you for doing that, Jack. Anything else you want to report on the feeding? Anyone leave any food? Yeah, a few of them left, but that was their second meal. Okay, so we fed about 120 animals. Oh, the good news is that there's very little mites on the uh, that the one, one inside. The one snake inside Jow's treating, and they think he's down to virtually zero mites. And three of them ate, didn't they, in there as well? Yeah. Uh, the big clown girl didn't eat, though, did she? She ate last week, she didn't eat this week. So maybe we've got a, so when you've got a problem snake that's come in and it's cold, don't expect it to eat every week. The fact that she ate last week was good, and maybe she'll gently get her metabolism. She's letting us know that she's not ready for another meal yet, which is fine. So I'm not worried about that. The fact that she took a meal, I'm very pleased. So, is there anything else, Jad? You mentioned the two that had two meals that left. Which ones were they? Bane, the pastel clown male. 
So the Pastor Clown Mel, he's breeding and he's locking and he's about 1100 grams. I'm not worried that he left his meal because he's got plenty in the tank. What I would say there, Jad, drop down to small multi. What did he that leave? That was a small multi. Was it a small multi? Well, yeah. there you go. <laughs> it doesn't always work. We did try. Mind you, that's one thing I wanted to report is that a lot of these big girls, we've got some more girls that I believe are on 25 mil on their follicles. And I'll tell you why, Jad, is which ones refused food? Here we go. Penelope. Let's, well, anything black is a refused food. Let's have a look and see why they refuse food. Look at the size of a Jad. I reckon her follicles are 25 mil. Just look at the girth on that. Now we could do, we don't have a ultrasound, but we could actually, what's the term when we use our hands to check for size? Palpate. Palpate. Jared knows how to do it. Do you want to palpate anything or not? I don't really do it anymore. I, I don't think it's that accurate because sometimes you can feel their muscles pushing against you. Yeah. We so. won't do that. I've, I've done a video before with how, you, how to do that anyway. We might do it in the future. But what I'm saying is that you don't need an ultrasound to tell you the size of the eggs necessarily because when they go off food, remember um, Rob, Rob's diagram? He said around about February, we're mid-January. He said that on the cycle of November to um, April, mid-February uh, is normally when the girls, if they've been eating well and building well and cool and cooling well, there'd be 25 mil. So I'm expecting more and more girls to come off food and nothing to worry about. It's actually a positive sign because it means that they're progressing. The other one that um, didn't eat, which one was the other one? So we had Daisy. And Cappuccino. Cappuccino. Let's get out all our big girls. Look how big they are. So I reckon they're carrying 25 mil um, follicles in there. That's my gut instinct. She's beautiful. And then we've got, who's this one here, Jared? This is cappuccino, bowl wrapping, Jared. Bowl wrapping behavior. That's looking very, look at the size of her. She didn't take a mil, but I think she's got 25 mil. So I think hopefully she'll go for us. She's gorgeous. Any other girls didn't eat, Jared, you see? Mocker girl, there's another one I think is 25 milled. Have a look at her, Jared. So how many more, how much time do you reckon it'll take before they get to that 45 mil stage, Jared? What is the timing on that, do you remember? I don't remember, no. No, it's gonna be a few weeks, but we're expecting them to probably go. February, March time. So it'll be probably about March. I'm expecting March, April, when things are gonna kick off. Yeah. I think we've got all these girls. Any other girls? But the two the boys. boys now interesting enough even though they're comfortable in their rubs they both refused food yesterday <laughs> isn't that interesting do you remember we did aladdin and kyla look they both refused yeah so i don't know why that is but it anyway, happens when males want to breed as well. they have been eating in the past maybe they're just satisfied with one meal every two weeks some males do that so that's nothing to worry about but we'll keep an eye on anything that doesn't eat though because it could be another underlining problem so Going off food can also be a medical problem. So we're not going to assume it's because of that. We're going to keep an eye on everything. And so I think that is probably the behavior side. Well, the other thing on the hatchling strap, what, what didn't eat? Now, normally we get back to back 100%. Why didn't some of these hatchlings not eat, Jared? What's the some reason Some of them for are in shed. Some of them, I'm not sure. Okay. So we need to try and investigate that. But if it's only one week, it's not a big issue, is it, Jared? No. no. If they refuse again next week, then we'll yeah. look more closely. Yeah. Make sure there's nothing wrong with them. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So I think then, how how are we doing for time, Jared? No, Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. We've got ten minutes. So let's um, have a look at some of the anatomy now. So I'm going to go up and do a little bit of science, and then part two we'll do the physical practical. So let's have a look at the. Uh, I've got everything on a website here. I'm gonna need my little pointer. Right. Now, Kaz said that she thought that ball pythons only have one lung. And like, when you look at this diagram, Jack, no. Just fill it with the white thing. Is it filling with the white thing? Yeah, so I've got an iPad that's connected to the TV and it needs a new connector, Jack. You might want to have to hit it. No? So, sorry about this. <laughs> technical technical issues here. And if it doesn't <clears throat> go through, Jared, I can just do it on the iPad. I'll take the iPad to the table and show people. I think that'll be the easiest thing. So, we need to get ourselves a new connection here. So. <clears throat> right, so from the diagram, Jared, you have to look at that. We've got one lung here, haven't we? See the right lung? Mm -hmm. And there was no evidence of a, hang on. How do you make that smaller, Jared? 
That's it. So that diagram doesn't show there's a second lung there. But according to um, a couple of websites I've been looking at, and there's a site called peteducate.com, they say that most snakes have one lung and some have two, but the second lung is less effective. That's what, he's, that's what they're saying. And then I went on to another website called livescience.com and they put out something called Python Facts and they're saying that um, pythons have two lungs. They have what they call a... It's a primitive characteristic and most snakes have evolved that way, apparently. So maybe it's part of evolution, Jared. So you've got one lung that works and the other lung's even not there or it's redundant and yeah. small. So then I went to the National Library of Medicine in the, U in the US to see what they, they were saying. And they're saying that the right lung is always fully developed. And where there's a left lung, it's going to either be absent. It's either going to be vestig vestigial. And do you know what that means, Chad? Mm. Vestigial means it's a small remnant of the past. So when you have an evolu a creature that evolves, it may keep a s small uh, remnant of its previous development, if you know what I'm saying. So that's that one. And then the other thing they said is it could be fully well developed. It could have a snake with two fully developed lungs as well. So I was surprised to hear that. So it looks as though it depends on probably the type of python and the genetics of that python, but in theory it can still have two lungs. So why is it important to study anatomy, Jared, to understand anatomy before we do the practical? Well, it helps you understand if there's something wrong with the snake, you have a good idea of what it could be. Yeah, absolutely. And it says here that the um, right lung is often connected to the tra it's called a trachea. tracheal lung. That means, Jared, why is it called that? Because it's connected to the trachea. Exactly. Okay, and in, uh, there isn't a lot of data on this, and they're saying there's a lack of data, but they've given us some things. So if you want to go and look at more detail on this, obviously that's a website, the US National Library of Medicine, do some information on that. So that's a little bit of the anatomy covered. Um, we've probably got, how much time we've got, Jack? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. So in those eight minutes, I'm going to see if I can share the causes of RTI, bacterial RTI. Now, Jack, what do you think causes bacterial... ITI. A couple of things. I think uh, incorrect humidity. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, cool temperatures when they get cold. Yeah. Uh, stress in the tub, in the rub. Like giving them a rub that's way too big can stress them out. Or even way too small. Way too small, yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is good. Um, if you've got a snake that's, that you bought that has it already. Yeah. And then you touch that snake and then touch another snake, there's potential that it can. So cross-contamination of, of animal plus, I suppose, the tools that we use, like the gloves and everything else, you've got to keep, keep clean. So well done, Jared. That's a lot of really good reasons why things can go wrong. And um, let me ask you a question. There's the old... Uh, if you look at the forums going back many, many years and some of the, the articles and debates, the, some of the snake community used to believe that there was a formula that said heat plus humility will equal RI which is respiration infection so there was a common misfounded belief that they thought that heat plus humility caused it and with study and analysis that that myth that myth is now being um, exposed and people's mindset has been corrected now that it, heat and humidity alone do not cause RI there was one other essential component of the formula that causes RI. Any ideas, Jared? No? So it's all to do with stagnant air. So I've learned that heat plus humidity plus stagnant air equals RTI. Now I'm into my formulas and maths. <laughs> um, and RTI contains, sorry, stagnant air. What causes stagnant air, Jared, in in the facilities or in the rooms or in the rubs? No fans or ventilation. No fans or ventilation. Anything else? No. <laughs> no. Okay. So you're on the right track. So we had to adjust this. Do you remember when we first set this up, we didn't quite get enough holes in these rubs because the new racks 
a lot more watertight than our old racking system and we underestimated the need to ventilate and then we decided to ventilate because the humidity levels were too high. So we had a, from Richard Predator BP, he gave us this trick and I've got a tool. It's Mandy's, what is she, what we Soldering iron. Soldering iron. I've used Mandy's soldering iron from a craft, she's got a craft shop, well not craft shop but a craft area in the house and she let me borrow it and we were drilling them, we were using a drill before and it, the drill used to crack but if you use one of those soldering irons, you can do that really quickly. And you can see there's a lot of holes in our rubs because the, these racking systems are just too efficient in some ways, too much humidity. So you've got to make sure that there's proper breathable vents in your rubs. And you don't just do it at the front, you do it at the back. And these rubs, because they've got no lids, you can see that there's an air, there's a little air gap in here, Jared, yeah. as well, isn't there? So they're gonna get air circulation from that, they're gonna get air circulation but if there's no airflow in the ambient room, that's why we've got the fans. Yeah, that's why we keep the fans on. We only switch them off for video purposes. That creates airflow. And in the early stages of our build, facility build, when we first came in here six months ago, I said to Jared, what's all that smell I can smell? And it's an odor, isn't it? And it was all dead rats in the bins. It was feeling of stagnant air and I didn't like it, I didn't want to walk in myself and I'm thinking hey, that can't be good for the snakes Jared. So we had to do a couple of changes and we brought in an air purifier just over there, purifies the air and also adds the airflow because it kind of discharges it and that takes out all those horrible chemicals that build in the air if you have stagnant air. Any idea what chemicals are in there Jared? No. So if you have 120 snakes breathing, what are they breathing out? CO2. CO2. Now, if you've got one or two snakes in a room, you're not going to have a CO2 issue. But you have 120, even though there's very little CO2 coming off a snake, believe you me, if you have 120, there's going to be a lot more. So you get a build-up of CO2, which is not good. And if you don't have this as breathing facility, that CO2 will just build. And it becomes poisonous. There's another ingredient in the air called, they call it microbial volatile organic compounds which for sure MVOCS 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 it's not good okay and this is um, what that does if you have that stuff in the air it actually um, feeds the bacteria and fungi so the fungi and bacteria get feed off that so the more you can remove those horrible chemicals in the air all those horrible elements, shall we say, the better. And then, if you get like a, a lot of that build up, it leads to ammonia, sulfurous, and lots of other VOC metabolic materials in there, all damaging to your snakes and to us. So, that leads then to a sick building, what they call sick building syndrome. So, you created a sick building by not having air vents not having all the fans running, not having fresh air coming in. You've actually created a laboratory for disease without realizing it. And then that leads to mold growth, that leads to the infections going into your snakes. So it's a chain reaction. Air quality is everything, Jared. Okay. So we have run out of time. We're gonna talk about on part two, how to ventilate our facilities and how to solve that problem. And then Jared's going to do a demo. So thank you so much for your love and support. I hope you found this uh, helpful and informative. And we shall see you very shortly.